Muslim faithful Nigeria and across the world, what a month it has been of Ramadan. Well, welcome to the feast. Adel Fitri is upon us. Welcome to the morning brief as well. I'm Kayode Okikili. Good morning. I'm Anne Umawado. Welcome. I hope you've been enjoying your holiday. Some have said add Friday to this, but we do not know about that. But welcome to the morning brief. I'm Anne Umawado. <laughs> Happy holidays and to our Muslim brothers and sisters as you celebrate Eid al Fitri. We're here to make sure you have that companion that is necessary for television right here from our global headquarters in Nigeria, Lagos to be precise. I'm Jeffrey Uzama. So I've been getting feelers yeah. and I've been reliably informed that um, there is this plot. Mm. Mm. So you know Easter was like two weeks ago mm. and a lot of people turned off their phones because they didn't want others to come and enjoy and eat in their house so they turned off their phones they went in communicado so i hear that some people are planning to retaliate <laughs> today so please in the spirit of love friendship and <laughs> feasting do not turn off your and phones. national unity <laughs> and national national unit. do not turn off your phone today do not do tit for tat okay let us embrace each other and ensure that we share i know it is the lesser eat yes mm. i know the meat it's not is, the it's not the yeah it's not the big salad. one but even that at all at all they say Nine bad pass. But you know what it is. Here in Nigeria, there's a lot of religious tolerance. We uh, work together, we celebrate ourselves, and we respect each other's religion. So wherever you are, whoever you are, just, well, let's show some love today, shall we, guys? So it's going to be all about love today, celebration today on the show. We have it all packed as usual for you on Morning Brief today. <laughs> Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's a time for sober reflection. All of this uh, spiritual exercise that is carried out by Christians and Muslims uh, alike, it's a time to reflect on the essence of our being here. And primarily, it's about love. It's about loving each other. It's about looking out for each other. We're, we're here, you know, so we need to drop all the mutual suspicion and all of that element and begin to see how we can coexist and make the most out of this 200 million plus population that we have. We can't run away from each other, we're here. So we have to stick together, look for the fine lines of how we can work together to build our nation and our country. So our Muslim brothers are celebrating today. and It's been a long journey of denying themselves uh, the pleasure of food. And today uh, they get back to it, they do the prayers this morning and all of that. So hey, um, as we pray, uh, make sure you pray for the, the country, do you pray for your neighbor? You pray for our businesses. You pray for everything. And let's see how we can build our country together. This is the only country we have, which is why Timmy Dakolo's song reflects on me. We are all we have. We cannot run away from ourselves. We have to look for a way to be together, build the country, and make the most out of our situation. Yes, and I also know that a lot of people have said, oh, the mood is down, there's really no reason to celebrate because the economy, the challenges we're all facing as a country. But I mean, I'd always tell people, look at the good side, look at something good, find something in the midst of all the trouble, yeah. all the wahala. Just look for something that will make you have a reason to say thank you or something that will make you happy. Maybe when you start doing that, then you'll <coughs> see that there's always a reason to celebrate. So to our Muslim brothers, our sisters, and indeed everyone in the world, remember collaboration, unity, peace, that is all we will continue to preach. And as Jeffrey said, this is the only country we have. So if you are staying here, then we have to all work together to make it work. Quite interesting that you will always find a reason to do uh, either uh, gratitude or ingratitude. I mean, one reason to be grateful is the fact that it's an extra public holiday, <laughs> right? That's something <laughs> that's to celebrate. That's Thursday. That's well. That's an extra. It was two before, so was two one before. was added. I know people are asking for one more. See, ah. that is where ingratitude now creeps in because you keep <laughs> wanting more. But let us enjoy the extra because some people will also say, "Well, you, I don't have a job, so public holiday or not, it doesn't change anything." But it's in the little things, all right. So let us help you to walk through the day, starting off. Uh, with all of the big conversations and the big stories uh, that will be shaping the day and who knows the coming days, shall we? So let us get into what we have for you on the show this morning. For the next well, less than two hours, this is a picture of what you'll be enjoying right there, whether you're on the move, in your house, or who knows, in the office. Well, 30 days of dusk to dawn, Ramadan fast culminates in a feast to break the fast. Eid al-Fitri, or what some call the lesser Eid. 
Well, this year's celebration even comes with an extra day of public holiday. So join us as we join Muslims in Nigeria and across the world to mark the day, not just with the food, with the merriment, but also the lessons that should linger from today. Well, he's a triple threat, if you'd like to call him at least. He's an actor, he's a singer, he's a comedian with a rich genetic ancestry. And he's equally very rich in talk, uh, when you talk about creativity. Some say that he's stepped out of the spotlight. For some others, he's mentoring the next generation. Well, he joins us on the show today to tell us what he's been up to. Whilst, uh, whilst we wait for that gentleman to come through, a great guy, by the way, I must say, let's tell you that we're heading to France. For the second time this year, Nigeria's national football team defeats South Africa. But yesterday's victory by the Super Falcons against the Bayana Bayana is even sweeter as it ends a 16-year wait for an Olympic appearance. You can't beat that. We're super proud of those girls. 16 years we've been waiting for this girl to head out to wherever the Olympics will ever be organized That's and this Paris. time we're <laughs> heading to, to Paris. Paris in France. Yay. Yes, beautiful. Are. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, South Africa, but that's how we roll here in Nigeria. We just keep beating you every time. It's not 2-0. Oh. 2-0 right now. <laughs> and don't take this serious. You know, I was, I was speaking to a lady from South Africa uh, some weeks back. And she was like, you know what? I love Nigeria. Oh, I love Nigerians, I particularly the... Uh, the demons, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> your brothers, Kayode. Our brothers. Your we cannot brother. deny them. You know? And you know, she says Nigerians just have a way with words, way they make you feel comfortable, the, the way they make you feel happy. And she was almost going to show me messages she gets mm. from her friends in Nigeria. So kudos to Nigerians. I, I know that there was this conversation online about how Nigerians like to use flowery words. You know that thing that trended. Uh, where someone said, it, once he sees the words delve in an email, it just automatically thinks that is AI. And I just mm -hmm. said, no, we use big, big English, if I can use that. <laughs> so things like, before we segue into this conversation, let's delve into um, this. Well, before we Maguire into something. <laughs> We use big words naturally okay. for the fact that our yeah, native that, languages are flowery. Yeah, so we look for those flowery words in English yeah. language. We can say reiterates. The mm. person reiterated this. Is I'm saying he said it again. Or it's and you know, Nigerians are very bold. Yeah, we're very brave and bold. I, I'm telling you, the truth is, look, when it comes to the the, the length and breadth of Africa, I think Nigerians are the, one of the boldest people because we've been through hell and warm waters. Mm. So. What are you going to show us that we haven't seen? So we are very bold people. So I can understand where some of these guys are coming from. So when you see us, it's not as if we are proud necessarily. Yeah, we have some, some of that, by the way. Uh, but, you know, we, we take it on. We're not afraid of anything. Because what's actually the worst that can actually happen? Nothing. So we've seen though, we, we're, we're bold people. So thank you for the compliments. We accept it. Let it keep coming. You know, they always say... They, they always keep it say, coming. They say if anywhere you go and you do not find a Nigerian, run. then just run. That's not a place to stay yeah. because we're everywhere. And no matter where we are, we know how to cope, which is a good thing about us. So our strength is our strength. So to all those who love us and to those who beef us, thank you. <laughs> we love you too. So send in your comments. We'll be Hello taking them Ghana, from... by the way. Ghana, Cameroon. <laughs> Senegal. Okay. Hello. Well, no, Senegal is not in this battle. They are not even. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't, they they didn't register yet. for the battle. But Guineans and South Africa, they find a way to always look for something around. You know, this this thing yeah. you guys are starting. No. Well, you know right. their handles online. You know where to find them. <laughs> no. So hey. I'm I wash my hand like pilots right now. <laughs> but bring in your comments, whether you're in Ghana, in South Africa, anywhere in the world or in Nigeria. We're taking your comments from about 7.20, so send them in, hashtag CTV Morning Brief, across all social media platforms. We are here for you. So that's our hand of fellowship to you. Let's do this together, shall we? This is the Morning Brief, and it's extra special because it's Eid al-Fitri, which is essentially the feast of the breaking of fast. That's what Eid al-Fitri means. Are you ready for this? We're taking the top stories in about a couple of seconds, so stay with us right here. We're back with the top stories, then we'll segue into the big conversation <laughs> for the day. Stay with us, it's the morning brief.
it's time for our top stories on The Brief this morning. Well, it's Eid al-Fitri, or simply the Feast of Breaking the Fast, which marks the end of Ramadan. And President Bola Tinubu is celebrating with the Muslim faithful, wishing them a happy celebration. In a statement signed by the Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Ajurin Galali, the President, who, by the way, is in Lagos, greeted the Muslim faithful in Nigeria and all around the world, praying that their prayers and sacrifices this season and even after will receive fitting rewards from Almighty Allah. President Tinubu also appealed to all citizens to come together and rededicate themselves to the noble duty of building the nation, stating that we are the sculptor and Nigeria is the clay. We build it the way we desire. The president then prayed that the lessons, the blessings and the joys of the season abide with all Nigerians always. But there's nothing much to celebrate, particularly for traders in the popular Dosumu market in Lagos Island, where another fire disaster hit, coming barely three weeks after some parts of this same market was engulfed in an inferno. Well, the early morning fire, which started from a two-story building in Dosumui Tomota Street, Jankara, soon spread to other nearby structures. But to contain further spread of the raging fire, emergency officials who responded to the situation later resorted to pulling down one of the buildings. When the fire incident occurred and it affected a generator that they are loading, that they are fueling, what they did is, is was that they, instead of them to put up the fire, to limit the fire to that generator, they threw the fire out. In the process of putting the fire out, it, in, it, it involved other properties. The fire has already affected 14 buildings now, both severe and partial effect. 14 has had worked by well, one, but the fire is under control now. Major challenge was water, and we were able to secure the punishment center from National Port Authority MP, not far away from here. And that's why the fire is totally under control. We you know the number of uh, shops, number of uh, traders, and other uh, statistics that are necessary. However, the most important thing is we have been bringing it to them. They need safety measures, insurance coverage, and fire marshals. <laughs> My boys called me that something is happening in Dosumu. So I asked them what is it. They said this fire is burning everywhere. Before before I rushed down to this place, my shop, all my shop has finished. And even of my warehouse here also has finished. Nothing nothing come out from there. Well, in response to that fire disaster, the Lagos state government has directed that commercial activities in Tosumu Street and its uh, immediate environs in Lagos Island be suspended with immediate effect until further notice. In a statement by the special advisor to the governor on Central Business District, Mrs. Bola Lowell, uh, the measure became necessary in order to prevent loss of life and maintain peace and order in the area, as well as make way for emergency responders in case of fire disasters or emergencies such as this one. Well, the areas affected by the suspension of commercial activities include Dosumu, Namdi Azikwe, Mashalashi, Woro Pedro, and Obanikoro Street. And moving on now to the back and forth between the government and the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who is again challenging the President to disclose the full cost of the Lagos Calabar Highway project. In a statement, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2023 presidential election wonders why the government released a sum of 1.06 trillion naira for the pilot phase, which is about 6% of the project, which begins at Eco Atlantic and is expected to terminate at the Lekki Deep Sea Port. He asks that the federal government must come clean on the project by responding to questions such as, why is the project being funded by the Nigerian government despite being a public-private partnership? Why is 1.06 trillion naira being spent on the pilot phase, which is 47 kilometers? And how did the Tinubu administration get the design as well as a right-of-way in just seven months since it claims the past administration of Goodluck Jonathan and Muhammad Buhari never touched the project? But in reaction to 
Well, those questions, the President's Special Advisor on Information and Strategy, Mr. Bayo Nanuga, is challenging Mr. Abubakar to get his facts right about the project. Well, according to him, at no time did the administrations of former President Muhammad Buhari and Goodluck Jonathan award contract for the construction of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway to any company at any varied or revised amount. He notes that the question of cost comparison does not arise, adding that the contract that was awarded was that of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road a uh, rail designed as part of the standard gauge national rail network. Let's get into party politics now. As the Labour Party says, the Nigeria Labour Congress, the NLC Political Commission, lacks the power to sack the national chairman, Mr. Jiris Abuli, led National Working Committee. Well, the party is responding to a communique issued by the Political Commission of the NLC after a stakeholder meeting in Abuja on Monday, where it sacked the NWC led by Abure and called for the setting up of a transition committee to run the party. Reacting to this development via statement, the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Mr. Obi Raifo, described the stakeholders meeting as an illegal assembly of a handful of aggrieved former members of the party and some whom he described as social media tigers who are not card carry members of the Labour Party. And the plot thickens in Kano State as the High Court there will, on April the 17th, arraign the immediate past governor of the state, Mr. Abdullahi Ganduje, on charges bothering on allegations of bribery, diversion and misappropriation of funds, including the purported acceptance of $413,000 and 1.38 billion naira in bribe. The charges against them pertain to allegations of bribery, diversion, and misappropriation of funds, including uh, those uh, funds who, uh, which has been alleged. The accused individuals, as listed in the writ of summon, include Mr. Ganduje, Hafsat Umar, Abubakar Bawuro, Umar Abdullah Umar, Jibrila Muhammad, Lamash Properties Limited, Safari Textiles Limited, and Lesage General Enterprises. The Kano State Government, which initiated a criminal suit against the eight respondents, declared its readiness to present 15 witnesses to testify before Justice Usman Naba of the Kano State High Court No. 4. Well, let's talk health matters now. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC, has confirmed ongoing investigations into a mysterious illness affecting communities in the Issa local government area of Sokoto State. Well, during a media briefing, the Director General of the agency, Dr. Olajide Idris, reveals that this illness has resulted in four fatalities, with 164 suspected cases reported. While no definitive diagnosis has been made yet, clinical assessments and investigations have ruled out an infectious origin. Dr. Idris highlights that initial tests on the patients revealed varying blood levels of lead and chromium, which could be linked to mining activities in the affected communities. When they went there, they recorded those four deaths. Both of them were, they were deaths from within the community, but the cases from the hospitals showed that perhaps again they had some renal complications of whatever might be causing it. You understand me? So, before you come to any conclusion, you must make a diagnosis, or else you, be, you, you can't be treated blind, blindly. So, as of now, we don't have any cause of death. We are now expanding our level of investigation now to cover other things. Suspect, suspicion that, that this might be related to some activities within the communities, because look what I was like mining, mining activities. You know, in mining, they use all sorts of chemicals to extract these things. Some of this might be injurious to the health of people. And again, you know, the use of children in this, in this kind of places. So we don't have a definite diagnosis, but other things have been taken. And that's why now we're bringing other laboratories like Nipreid, Navdak, if the laboratory in Sokoto could not do much. Because the delay actually from the laboratories in, uh, in Sokoto it took them a while to get back to us on the results of the testing for heavy, met uh, heavy metals. Is this what I just came out, if, I, mean, I think yesterday or two days ago, that showed that there were high levels of lead and chromium in the sample sent. Business now, while we'll continue to follow that situation, the federal government has allocated about 4.83 trillion naira from Nigerian Treasury bills and bonds issued in 2024 to settle the Central Bank of Nigeria's ways and means advances. And that's according to the Minister of Finance, Mr. Wale Edu. 
The Minister of Finance made this known during a presentation at the Lagos Business School Breakfast Club. Now, while the total ways and means owed to the CBN is over 23 trillion naira, the National Assembly had last year approved the securitization of an outstanding 7.3 trillion naira of the ways and means advances. In February, the CBN governor, Mr. Laimi Kadoso, said that the Apex Bank will no longer grant ways and means loans to the federal government unless all outstanding balance is settled. And out of the country, they may not have pulled the trigger, but the mother and father of a Michigan youth who shot and killed four classmates have each been sentenced to between 10 and 15 years in prison after a jury convicted them of manslaughter. In a rare case of parents being held responsible in a school shooting, Jennifer and James Crumbly, who are Ethan Crumbly's parents, were sentenced immediately after several parents of the victims gave emotional statements in an Auckland County courtroom in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, their son was 15 at the time of the shooting at Oxford High School in 2021, in which four students were killed and six other students and a teacher were wounded. Ethan pleaded guilty the following year to four counts of first-degree murder and other charges and was sentenced to life in prison without parole in December. And out of sports news, nine-time African champions, the Super Falcons of Nigeria, have ended a 16-year absence from the Olympics game. And that follows Nigeria's senior women team's, uh, well, victory over Bayana Bayana of South Africa. Well, they came out of a goalless draw in the return leg of their Olympic qualifier. The result in Pretoria means the Falcons eliminated South Africa 1-0 on aggregate, having won the first leg by a long goal in Abuja. Rashida Dadibaje of Atletico Madrid, Femini, scored that goal from the penalty spot in the first leg. And this is Nigeria's first qualification since 2008 at the Beijing Games. Now, they join Brazil, Japan and Spain in Group C of that tournament. So big congratulations to the Super Falcons. Uh, we're proud that they're making us proud. But let's take a look at what you're saying about the top stories and some of the trending issues this morning. Jeffrey joins me to walk through your comments on the show. Jeffrey. Absolutely. So I was looking through some of the things uh, you put out, uh, yeah. the top stories, and some stand out for me. This never-ending, festering relationship between labor and, and the, the NLC. Party, the NLC. As a matter of fact, a lot of people did not even know that there was a unit called the political commission. commission. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> we learn every day. A lot of people did not know there was a political commission of yeah. the NLC uh, being at the front of all of this. But let's hear it ends uh, because they are saying they want to do an expanded uh, national convention. They got the, the proper was, convention. The right? proper convention. That's the term they use. And uh, looking at what happened in the U.S., uh, Parents being held responsible for the action of their children is, is quite a I think it's a, a, it's a landmark judgment for some people who have said time and again, I mean, that parents, particularly if this person is not an adult yet, there should be some responsibility also taken by the parents. So this is a landmark judgment and you wonder how far this will go in particularly making parents maybe sit up. I mean, this is not to blame any parent, but it's important to reiterate, mm. and there again, that big term, that so, parents have a major role to play in whatever it is their children turn out So everybody to. has to be careful out there. America needs to take down the number of guns in their society, over 300 million guns in their mm. population. So let's get to what you're saying. Well, the public holiday has been extended by an additional day. A lot of people did not know, so let's tell you now officially. It was Tuesday to Wednesday. The federal government had to add Thursday. And you're saying... Why don't you just make it Friday? So come on. <laughs> in Nigeria, they say make it for no loss. I don't know how to interpret that. But because in any case, mm. uh, what you find out, and this is, I mean, there's, there's a lot of debate around this. Friday mm. is usually a half day mm. for some people. Now, coming some people up no a public day. holiday, particularly because they have some to travel, no yeah. they just say, you know what, let us add Friday just to grind. it. But you question what then happens to our productivity. Okay, a fussy press, special press says, we bless God for this <laughs> holiday. Assuming then feast day add Friday, join her, you know, for bad. That means it's saying for those international audience, just make it up to Friday. So we just rest the entire week. Come on, man. Well, G. King guest, uh, or King Kest, as the case may be, is on that queue. And I tell you, that queue is really long, asking the federal government to add Friday to it, saying, uh, thank you. Mm. Let's just take the whole week off. That's what this user uh, says. But when you think about it, in just a little above two weeks, mm. we've had five days of public holiday. That That's is an entire a week, week 
of public holiday. Again, uh, they'll say, do we, do Nigerians really have that work-life balance anyway? So this is maybe trying to just help Nigerians have the work-life balance. Some maybe. other people so say- So make the most of it. I guess. Exactly. Uh, this is from John, uh, says, I hope the Crescent can delay so they can make Friday a public holiday to say. Crescent has not been delayed. It's been seen. It's been seen. The moon has been sighted. Sorry. So, so perish the thought. Uh, uh, Adola Michael on X also says that a whole three days, people working hand to mouth. How are they expected to survive if a country is observing holidays? So um, I imagine some businesses will still go on feeding, for example, mm. food. That's always big. Whether it's public holiday, even during the I think the people COVID that will be period. affected the most is. Intra-city transportation. Right. Inter uh, may work properly because people want to travel. Yeah. But intra-city, if you Might drive through effective. Lagos, you know, those are the moments you like to drive through Lagos. The third mainland bridge, the traffic is quite But minimal. even public transport, particularly intra-city, still thrives because that's mm -hmm. when you find uh, families moving to, you know, friends' places or, you know, old friends ah, visiting other Lagos. people. <laughs> well, so yeah, it's a... Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Mansa Uma says, automatically, I like you, Friday is added. No. It's a goal. <laughs> no, that's, that's not... That is your own version. That's not from the federal government. But we know what you're saying, like... Just give it to me. I'm taking it on my own. Oh, goodness I, me. Apuesto Babatokwe says uh, this will affect a lot of people. That's what this user believes. For example, we'll get to the hospital. We're told uh, to come back on Friday. They can only attend to emergency situations on public holidays, not normal outpatient. Um, okay. Okay. We uh, need to find out. We need to check that out, okay? But let's get uh, to the issue of so the... So let us know what hospital that is uh, yes. and take that, a look at the policy. Is it 24-hour service? Well, I know that, they, again, there are policies regarding this. Mm. Emergencies, you should never turn it away, even if it's a public holiday or whatever exactly. the case is. So, never turn an emergency away. But for outpatients, which this usually references, I know there are different policies. But when you think of it, uh, a person is ill, a person is ill. If it's something that can wait... Maybe, but if it's something I cannot wait, why tell the person come back? Yes, and then from the public holidays, let's head to the issue of fire that uh, happened in the Sumo market. Mm. This fire thing uh, in Lagos is becoming a thing. It is. Uh, we, we, there's nothing we want to say that has not been said, so let's just read your thought, okay? Badma says, okay, okay, that's, uh, that's it on the screen. Uh, we, you, you heard it from the top stories when Kaido was reading uh, the officials talking about how things uh, happened there, uh, and uh, it's been brought under control, by the way. All of this has been brought under control, but when you look at this, you're not seeing just fire, seeing people's lives and investment, livelihood, just go down in one fell swoop. It's just quite sad, very, very sad to watch someone's investment just gone mm. in, in just in just a blink before you win case over. It's, it's quite sad. Um, Thanks to the fire servicemen, I hope they were there early enough to stop as much as they could. But Badmo says that is another person, uh, that's another person's end of business. Some will lose their house, another property, uh, nothing is permanent in this life. Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean we should not be careful. No, absolutely. Because when, be when you listen to the account of how the fire started with uh, generating set, and it was said that the generator set was flung away or the fire was flung away and that affected you know, other areas, you just get a sense of why we need more education. And uh, take a look at this next one. Ima underscore Zami says that Nigerian government should please invest in fire service. Uh, oh, yeah, we actually have an active fire service. Uh, yes. But I think I get the point she's saying that we could be better. But we have to give some kudos to the fire service, Lagos State Fire Service and Rescue Agency, LASEMA, and even NEMA, as well as other responders. You know, it's always a collaboration. So we have to give kudos to them. You saw them right there doing that work. And um, they had to even demolish a building just so they ensure the fire doesn't spread. So uh, we have to give kudos to them and perhaps to the people as well who support it. Orochi Maru says, uh, Omo, what's happening every week, fire here and there? OK, that's your observation. Uh, that's what we've been talking about, that this has to be controlled one way or the other. Kyrie. I have a quick question, though. Yeah. Uh, how much of um, combating fire do you know about as an individual? Do you know what to do when there's a fire? Do you know what your first action should be? Do you pour water? Do you pour sand? Do you get a fire extinguisher? How do you even...
point? Where do you point the I flag? I think that is a, it's a valid question. Yeah. That means we may need to invite uh, Mr. Sain Tolu or some of the people. Uh, well, the fire question. service head, well, she was meant to join us at some point, but hopefully yes. we'll have her on yes, the show. Yes, so we, we should. Uh, those are the questions we'll ask them because right now it looks like um, the people at the scene are the first responders who should quickly yeah. do something before uh, we bring all the big gadgets to put out the fire. Yeah. That is a very valid question. Like it. And um, I think that just points to what Ben is, says, mm -hmm. that people should be educated on how to use light. Oh, I imagine you're saying fire extinguishers, most especially in Lagos, to stop, uh, well, this loss of property and the rest. And Badness, Odman says, when you build a house like this, this is another important point. Always expect uncontrollable fire outbreak. Lagos State needs to work on their house construction planning. I used to live in a place where uh, there was a bit of ventilation at the back of my house, my flat where I stay. But all of a sudden, boom, a building was erected. And ventilation, Jackba. Goodness me. Didn't find his way back. So, I mean, look at this image. So just, just look at this, the cluster, literally. It's, it's literally a cluster. What you're seeing is a cluster. So the blue roof, sorry, I'm not very great with colors. I just know black, blue, red, and all of that. So That's the other one that looks like brown, <laughs> I heard men are not too great with colors. <laughs> so whatever those colors are, the one that looks like whites and all of that, see, are they clustered together? So yeah. how do you expect people to breathe fresh air in the first place? So mm. health issues, when there is fire, how will the fire service people come into this kind of space? Yeah. It's even worse than this. This is even looking a bit nice. Some places are just horrible. So this is the responsibility of the government to take into account before they approve buildings. Absolutely. Uh, you, you come off the road, there's traffic jam, you come to your, I mean, look at this, it looks like a traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> this cluster just looks like a jam in itself. That's why you find some other climbs, they build with maybe wood so they can easily detach those buildings where there are fires and the rest. Oh, so we need concrete. To, concrete. So it's really tough. It's really Most tough. times the fire will spread. But let's move on uh, to other issues now. The fire is a big one. The Lagos State government has suspended business activities in uh, central Lagos, that area, particularly as a result of this while they work on it. So we'll see how that goes on. But we'd like you to sort of see a video rather. And this video is some sort of apology. This issue has been trending. It's a case of alleged defamation against gospel artists uh, Nathaniel Bassi, Mr. Chinwo, and her husband. And this uh, particular user his name, you find out, has issued an apology. So let's take a listen to it and we'll come to look at some of your reactions. Hello everyone, my name is Kingsley Ibe and in this video I'm here to address something very, very important. And to start with, this video is made voluntary from the bottom of my heart. I was not pressured or forced by anyone. I made a reckless comment concerning Pastor Nathan Nebasi, in which I am very, very sorry. It was a reckless comment, and I plead to Pastor Nathan Nebasi, I extend my sincere apology to you for the comment I made on social media and to your family as well. I know the damages it has caused, and I take responsibility for everything. And I'm deeply sorry from the bottom of my heart. I am sorry to the followers, to his fans, his ministry, to the Hallelujah Challenge, and to the RCCG Oasis. I am also a fan of Pastor Nathan Nebasi and also his followers for the past years. And I did not make my comment with the intent to cause harm or evil. I am deeply, deeply sorry. what we say. Uh, social media democratizes opportunity and gives voices to the voiceless, but there is a limit to which you can say what's on your mind, especially when you don't have facts. I want to advise every young person out there, there is a legislation called the Criminal Code of Nigeria. Go to section 373 and 375. Find out what he says about defamation. There is defamation that has to do with libel, that has to do with slander and all of that. That portion will be able to explain to you so that whenever you want to put out anything, um, the penal code will not come against you, the, crimi the, the, the cr criminal code will not come against you because if you're taken to court, 
um, they will read those sections for you and if you can't defend yourself mm. you're going to jail if you're not careful yeah. and it's, it's uh, i always say this that the law or all of those laws are really are not for us once you think about what i'm about to say is it kind is it fair is it truthful then you will need to look at the laws if you're kind the law will not apply to you the law is usually for stubborn people <laughs> people who are recalcitrant it shouldn't be for everyday people but it's good to see that apology and this is what people are saying about it a uh, pressure says again you have to understand the context in which nigerians are coming from he says if i was nathaniel based on the defamation i'm not going to show him mercy now i don't know if you're playing with words here because Mr. Chinwa is in the mix so you're saying I'm not going to show him mercy. He goes on to say he needs to serve either the living God or in jail. Come on. <laughs> well, it's up to Nathaniel and the uh, well, mercy. Well, put out a statement uh, in this regard, particularly for this user says, uh, well, it's been forgiven for this particular user, but oh, there are worry. others on that list who have okay. not either tendered an apology or have not submitted themselves. So the case is still on for the others on that list. I'm sure next time a lot of you will be very careful. So a young Emmanuel IJ says he should face the consequence. Uh, a lot of people need to learn to stop defaming people on the internet, which is what we said. Be careful out there before you say anything. You have a right to say what you want to say, but there's a limit to which you can say the things you want, especially if you don't have evidence. Uh, you need to limit how you say the things you say, all right? So, there you have it. By the way, I'm just uh, looking through that statement that says that, well, he's been uh, forgiven. That's in, that Nathaniel's statement. Yes, maybe. in oh. demonstration of the love of God. So, for those who are saying he should not be forgiven, well, it's water under the bridge, particularly for this user. But the case uh, continues uh, for the other ones who well, are yet, as I said, to, uh, to comment. But let's take a look at others, uh, other comments on this one. What's the next? one on this alleged defamation uh, as uh, the Facebook user apologizes. Mm. There you see, uh, our complacency has led to the exploitation of the once beautiful timeline by deceitful actors who seek to propagate falsehoods, propaganda, threats, radicalize and instill fear. It is crucial for young people, most especially, to develop responsible online habits and critically evaluate the information they churn out. Aptly, the way. next person is in smiling. Uh, Any says he needs to be locked up. He's only apologizing because uh, he got sued. <laughs> well, Nathaniel has forgiven him. Uh, from Nathaniel's end, he's forgiven. Uh, carry the next one. I, well, <laughs> maybe we should just move on because it was okay. said that his aged mother also had to come in and apologize as well. So uh, that is that. Uh, with that, more comments as you can see saying that this is a lesson uh, for next time. But this person suspects that he might repeat the same thing and ask for forgiveness, but he didn't say that. You know, let's just be charitable as well, both in action and in reaction. There's a lot more uh, to take a look at on this one, Jeffrey, but... Uh, mm. no, I, 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 let, you know, I quoted a section. Okay, oh, right. read it. Is it okay? This is for me? Yeah. It's a very good but Save it. You need to still help society by making yourself available to test the law. <laughs> it will set a precedent. <laughs> A president for others to know what to expect in case uh, they are after plea not accepted. So uh, the criminal code section 375, which has to do with a bit of the penalty or the punishment, is subject to the provisions of this chapter. Any person who publishes any defamatory matter is guilty of misdemeanor and is liable to imprisonment for one year. And any person who publishes any defamatory matter, knowing it to be false, let me emphasize, Knowing it to be false yeah. is liable to imprisonment for two years. You don't want to do that time. Not at all. Uh, carry the next one. So there you have it. Uh, keep your comments coming in. Uh, let us see what you have to say about some of those trending topics. Hashtag CTV Morning Brief. That's where you will find us. Carry the Anything. next one. There's a next one I, we may have to read. I think the big V. B <laughs> you will have to read that one. Oh, yeah. Big which, B, is, yeah. which is what I took earlier on. Okay. A lot of people are saying, oh, uh, Nathaniel Basley has forgiven okay. him. What if this happens again? You know that you can always ask for forgiveness and you'll get it. But I said, well, we have to be charitable in our actions and reactions. So, well, when that bridge comes, if it comes, we'll cross it and we'll find a way to cross I, I it. I think, in addition to that, so maybe whenever you want to say anything online, type in all of that. Meet your lawyer, ask your lawyer what is an opinion? <laughs> what is defamation that has a subset of libel and yeah. slander? And what is 
vulgar abuse. Those are, these are the things that the law looks at. Yeah. The some are not justiciable, means you can't take somebody to court for it. But some, like I read, the one I read, you will find yourself in jail if you can't prove it in court. So be careful. Be we careful. don't want you to be in jail for just saying what is on your mind. We want you to watch the morning break. <laughs> we want you to be here watching it with us. You can us, just like, extract the audio just take it easy, okay? from that video and make it your ringtone. Please, be so careful you, can, you always there. play it and Please. remember that, hey, I don't want to apologize and be in this kind of situation. But let's shift gears now. Yep. The EFCC has been speaking. And this is not the first time even the CBN and the government about those who charge in foreign currency for services rendered here in Nigeria. But finally, we're here. Yeah, so this is just a simple uh, caption. Charge for service in <laughs> dollars and go, go to, to jail. It's like saying... Urinate here and pay 50,000. As simple as that. You know, it used to be do not urinate. Now it's urinate. Don't worry. But bring your money along. <laughs> but the angle from this particular user, Focus Isaac, is quite interesting. And it is for Nigerian musicians asking that. So, how will they then work with Nigerian musicians? Um, I'm not a Nigerian musician. Oh, at least I, I'm not in the category <laughs> which you're asking. Uh, but that's a valid question. So, so I so, know so, so, they, 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 they charge in dollars, but will they be charging in dollars for services here in Nigeria? Nigeria in fact, so. there's a particular case uh, that was publicized okay. uh, between the former NFF president and, and David, David Doe. Doe. And the money being quoted, you well, know, was in dollars. So you, you, you understand uh, why this conversation is coming up. But Let's move on now, shall so, we? So I, I just feel that what they are saying is that if you're offering or rendering service or selling goods in Nigeria, do it in our local currency. Yeah. When you want to do it with out, people outside, maybe you could do it with uh, you know the other currencies. But right here in this country, you need to do it in our local currency because it's like passing a vote of no confidence on our own currency. That is not acceptable by the government at all. Uh, People's Choice says, why would someone charge in dollars in a country where Naira is used? That's a big question. The EFCC has said to you, sir, if you do that, will you find yourself in jail. All right? So, um, for some people, this is a conversation they can't relate with, right? But it is actually something for a lot of other people. So it needs to end. Apparently, it's also having its effect uh, on the Naira dollar. This next one is from, hmm, let me see. All right, let's take this one from, yeah, Lynn Cardinal. I hope I got that correctly. It says it's a right step. Every deal in Nigeria henceforth should be in Naira. Simple as, okay, that's simple as that. Let's get to the next one. Fire Storm says, what if the person is not working for a Nigerian? People do legit work online for foreigners. I'm sure there's a fine line between all of this, but what they are saying, my guess is, if I if Kade offers me service, Kade should not charge me in dollars. Pay me in naira. If you want to do the dollars, do the exchange, you know, and give me the naira equivalent. Right. We're trying to strengthen the naira, so the, the CBN is doing a lot, and we hope that the fiscal authority will also complement the effort of the CBN. The optics are looking good. The naira is rebounding as much as possible. Uh, we're dipping our hands where our vault is not that heavy to sustain what we're doing. So the fiscal authority has to do more. Let us ramp up our production level to maybe two million so that our exchange is a complicated conversation, but it's as simple as straight when it comes to Naira and dollar. And that's a very vital question. So we need to also um, ensure that we properly itemize either those mm. services and put into consideration some of these people. I mean, you work from home, for example, for a company in the US and you ask, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why you have a domiciliary account anyway. But take a look at this. What about writing our national budget in dollars, paying our sports teams in dollars, awarding contracts in dollars? The list goes on and on. Simply put, you are living in glass houses. Don't men. throw stones. So before you throw that stone, take a look at your glass house. Clean the house first and then we can talk about um, talking about so, us. So maybe we should not be saying things like um, mass, match bonuses, let's not be mentioning is $5,000 or so just tell us the Naira equivalent. Simple Your match bonus is 5 million Naira, 10 million. You know, let's not quarrel over that. I think that's what the, I, I think it's a valid statement the person is making. Is. Uh, you can't be ha harassing us quote and unquote and not take care of it your is. own end, okay? Absolutely. EFCC releases fresh charges against the CBN governor. You know, 
MFL has been in news for so <laughs> this is an avalanche. It's a breakdown of it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's we I, I don't know whether you can see that, but the, the is, I don't know whether it's legible for you. Twenty-six in total at this point. Twenty-six of them bordering on couple of financial infractions that has to do with payment in foreign exchange to certain accounts. But remember, all of these allegations, uh, they are all allegations. So that is what the EFCC is bringing or preferring against the CBN governor, or former CBN governor, I should say, uh, Godwin Emefiele. So he has to defend each of these counts in court. So he has a long walk to freedom if he finds it eventually. So let's find out what they are saying, Kyrie. Yeah. Just King Kings. says, you mean one man, just one man collects, I almost wanted to say it in pigeon. I think it would be better in pigeon. Mm -hmm. Collect all this money, send him to jail and throw away the keys. It's still an allegation. Absolutely. They're all allegations, they are all allegations. okay? So yeah, properly contextualize it. And that's what we said. Is it true? Before you type it, think, is it true? What you just said, is it true? Because these are allegations. Even the EFCC that is persecuting him will call it an allegation. An allegation. And that's why they're in court trying to prove it or otherwise. So let us... I think there's one that is to the tune of uh, a transfer that is to the tune of $2.1 billion that they say he, didn't, he did it without bid. You know, it borders on abuse of office. Mm. I know, I know and all those allegations. Take a look at this next one from uh, Mudukwe Oluwashigo saying starts with a caveat and you trust nigerians on this they have learned says i'm not on his side though but we need to understand some things in nigeria first how strong is our institution that a man can go this far if indeed he went that far those allegations are proven is it possible that a single man alone can do all of these please use a picture without bible for him what is the it's different strokes for different folks really <laughs> i mean it's funny how you look at a picture how you taught an elephant and what you feel is different from what the other person's feeling Absolutely. So uh, let's go to Mr. West. Uh, you're known by OT underscore Jason. If these allegations are proven to be true, then the defendant should face the full extent of the consequences because how you go chop all this money? That means how would you embezzle all of this? Still an allegation. I like the fact that you added allegation. There you go. Uh, Niikai's um, post is a comedic touch or a comedic angle to this, which is mm. what you find a lot on X. So I'll just let you do uh, the reading, uh, saying that they should do the needful as soon as possible. So you question, what is the needful? And then he goes on to add, otherwise, what happened in 1945 will happen again. He didn't give us an explanation. Yeah, so this is, an, this is an expression from Nigerians. They just um, pick a random date from decades ago and say, countries. yeah, otherwise what happened <laughs> then will happen again. Usually it just means... What does it even mean, Jeffrey? It's just yeah, a way I heard, of uh, saying there should not be a repeat. Thank God an OG is in the building, yeah. uh, a comedian who will explain this later, probably. So yeah. I heard there was a joke that a man was in a bus and he, he's, they call it change, but the balance he was supposed to get from the conductor wasn't coming to him. And he was like, give me my balance, or give me my change, else what happened in 1940? This, <laughs> so everybody was curious, what really happened? What re Eventually, it was a heated argument. And uh, when the man had the opportunity to say what happened in 1945, he said because of change issue, he had to trek, trek a long distance. <laughs> anyway, like... Thank you, like, Jeffrey, yeah. for, for that explainer. I That's the one I know. I now know I understand you. where that is coming from. So you kept us in this bus <laughs> arguing because you trekked. <laughs> Not that somebody was beating up or somebody was incarcerated, but so, hey. There you have it. Those oh. are some of your comments. Uh, we talk about the serious, the touchy, and sometimes uh, the funny, as you can see right now. But we're starting off with our first conversation of the day. Don't forget, it's Edel Fitri. We'll be linking up just to see how the day has been celebrated uh, across board. But stay with us right here on the Morning Brief as we bring to you our very first conversation. You do not want to miss this. Eid Mubarak, you'll hear that a lot today. What does it mean? What is the season, the celebration? What does it connote? And how do we bridge that gap between all of the lofty lessons, the teachings in religion with our national life? Because it looks like there's a divide. 
There's so much great things happening on the religious side. When it comes to national life, you wonder, how do we bridge the gap? And to do that with us this morning, we have joining us on the program, NASFAT President Worldwide, El Haji Ayodeji Abdurrauf. He's right here with us in our Lagos studio. Ibn Mubarak to you. Yeah, same to you, bro. I, I know this is a day we all talk about the, the feasting, you know, the festivity. It's been 30 days of Ramadan, dusk to dawn fasting. There's the praying as well, setting yourself aside and just essentially uh, focusing on all of the virtues, the teachings of Islam. So maybe you can just walk us through that experience, how you come out of the fasting, what it does to you. Before we talk about the feasting, first the lessons, then the feasting. Uh, first, uh, thank you, Ida Mubarak, again to uh, the crew in the house that we're speaking. And Ida Mubarak to our viewers at home. Uh, it, uh, he, um, Ramadan is uh, one of the months of the Islamic months. And that particular month is mandatory for all Muslims. So far you are fit and healthy, you are meant to observe the fasting. And if you observe, it's the only month that tied everybody down. Because as prescribed in the Quran, that at that particular month, the angels of evils are already tied down. So nobody will put you on any temptation. And that's why you see throughout the month is calm. Mm -hmm. So every Muslim is always aspiring to meet the month. And uh, when the preparation for the month, sometimes like this year's zone, because of the economic hardship, people will first thought it's gonna be hard, but God have a way of making things so easy. Like in our society, NASFAT, uh, this, this in Lagos alone, we fed over 100,000 people. Wow. And same in Abuja in most of our locations. We have about 360 locations across the globe. And our target, and people are giving us money. People are donating. It's not, it's not that we're using any resources we have at hand. So it's even a month that a lot of people give a lot of donation without color. People just give, they, they know you are using it well. And our society being what we have, we have been very transparent and accountable. There's a, 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 a pillars of Islam that is called Sakat. I'm telling you, if what Nasfat is doing with that pillar of Islam that is called Sakat, is well organized across Nigeria, we won't have poor people around us. In four years, we have distributed over 700 million with that Sakat. And it's not a member that give us that sakat money. Meaning? Sakat is, it take more like the, uh, the, ties, the ties, the ties <coughs> you take out of your salary. Mm. You know, it's 2.5% of your kept any for the year and you give it out. Every Muslim is supposed to be giving that out. And if people are constantly doing that, we, all, we always use that fund during this month too. Because a lot of people are paid, you know, like I said, over, over four years of our assistance during that, we call it Nazas. It's an agency, we call it Nasfat, Sakad and Sadaka Agency. And that agency can take a lot of money from people. Muslims that are ready to give their zakat out. So you could imagine if that fund could be grown to billions of naira. The impact would be, would be enormous in this country. So month of Ramadan is a, a period of anointing like we have in the Christendom. People get cleansed throughout the month because you, most of the things you do, uh, people that are used to going to beer parlor, taking pepper soup, they stop it. And if you check that period, everything is dead. Because the devils are supposed to take them there. is already died. And it's a period that people give a lot in terms of charity, in terms of donation. It's a period you have even help a lot of your neighbors. Your neighbors that cannot afford to eat during that Ramadan. If you are having your home meal, two major meals, which is our soul and our iftar. Our soul in the middle in the, in the mid of the night and our iftar by the time we are breaking. No Muslims, no Muslim will be doing that in his house and have his neighbor suffering and not being able to. Because that implies that you're not, you're not, you're not the real Muslims because that's the, that's the tenet of that month. And oh. our hope is that as we are rounding up the month, Muslims in general, even non-Muslims, could imbibe some of the values and, and ethic of that, of that month. Uh, all right, I'll actually, uh, Jarof, when we talk about the things that Muslims do during the month of Ramadan, I mean, you talked about some having to sacrifice some of the things, 
they used to do before. So now we'll ask, what are the lessons when you come out of this month of Ramadan? What are people expected to do? Are they supposed to behave better? Because most people go back to the same thing they were doing before yeah. Ramadan. So some will ask, what is now the essence of that holy month of Ramadan? Can you just enlighten us so people would understand why some people have to go back to their normal lives and what they are actually expected to do or what is actually supposed to make them better when they come out of the month from the holy month of Ramadan? Uh, like I said, human beings were human. And uh, throughout the month of Ramadan, there's a particular day in the last 10 days that we call the day of Lailatul Qadri. That's the day, the night of majesty. That's the night of changing your destiny. A lot of us that, that fast, Muslims that fast throughout the 30 days, if they are lucky, if we are you know, we always aspire to have that day because it's a, it's a, it's a day you have your destiny change. So if, if one has been able to perform it diligently for that last 10 days, I don't think it would be easy for you to go back. People that are probably lazy, they think it's just not eating, uh, just not eating one meal, take two meals. That's, that's mindset because even the meals are not supposed to be heavy meal. Uh, you know, everybody has his own way of taking, like myself, I take just tea and biscuit and that's it for myself. And when it comes to iftar, I take a very lighter food. But you give people a lot of things throughout that period. So, if you could experience the 30 days, especially the last 10 nights, you know, and it's assumed and we know that one of the whole day out of that last 10 nights is the day of Laila to the Qadri. And all of us diligently, and that's why some, some, of, some Muslims will go for what we call intikaf, which is seclusion for that last 10 days. We have some Muslims that will just go and sit in a mosque or in their house through attendance, no interaction with the worldly affairs. If you really do it devotedly, and you, 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 you take it passionately, I don't think you'll finish Ramadan and run back. But like I said, we are human beings. And like I, I, I said at the beginning, the devils are already tied. The devils are untied now after Ramadan. <laughs> so okay. if you are not well equipped throughout the month, you could be tempted. But what we always <coughs> encourage people is that after Ramadan, don't leave what you have been doing. Okay. You may not be that much in it. But if you constantly do it, you wake up in the morning, you take your prayer, your Fajri prayers, early in the morning, and then you read your Quran. Something will be guiding you towards the right path. You try and read Hadid, you know, some of the, some of the deeds of the Prophet, how, how he, he did something. Those ones are not in the Quran. There is a collection of all, of all his activity, all his deeds. And you, you are reading that. And anytime you are on the road, you must be conscious of not doing what is wrong to somebody. Because you know something will have inspired you early in the morning when you finish prayer. It's when you lose touch of your constant thing. You know, may not be as enormous as it is in the Ramadan. That's when you get derailed. Okay. And then you see people not going back to what they are used to. Okay. And it, bet you, these are the people that still struggle again when the Ramadan is coming to yeah. quickly get back and you cleanse themselves. Okay. People that are usual. Because Ramadan is not the only fasting period. Mm -hmm. in Islam. Mm -hmm. We have Mondays and Thursdays, which is not mandatory, and then we have 13, 14, 15 of every Islamic month. Uh, people, these are things that the Prophet did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be with him, and some of us that have imbibed it, there's no way you will go back mm -hmm. to that if you constantly, because that one is not 30 days on the long run. And then when you finish Ramadan again, we have six days of shower, because the next morning is shower. Six days of fasting. You can pick it anyhow or take it constantly. This is just to continue to sustain you and put you on the right path as a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So this the reason, one of the reasons why we love this conversation is to help us understand ourselves. Because we're a nation of multiple religion. At yes. least we have the Christian, the Muslim, Muslim, and the African religion and all of that. So you help us bring the knowledge of these similarities so that the level of mutual suspicion between side or uh, amongst us will reduce as much as possible. I want you to speak to that. Uh, you know, not as far as a society, uh, like uh, people call us sometimes Pentecostal Muslim, 
because of the way the Pentecostals are doing their, their, their divine work. But first, it's a society that started in 1995 by the elites. A lot of us, some like me, were professionals on the, on, on, the, on the broad streets. A lot of us felt the way the religion will our children do the same because we didn't, our children didn't pass through the Ileke, you know, the Arabic classes that we have, that they have to be beating us and all sorts. Then most of our children, we have taken them to a nursery school. We never go to nursery school, okay? And definitely there will be a cultural uh, uh, conflict in terms of the values of those children. And we felt, let's start a society that will be nothing but impacting. You know, a society that will be the peace setter for, uh, for uh, it's a peace setter Islamic organization that will be acceptable worldwide. Uh, today, Alhamdulillah, we've been able to get reached to that level and develop an enlightened Muslim, you know, for upliftment or for spiritual upliftment and then for the welfare of mankind. That's how we started. That's as far back as 1995. And just few people, maybe 12, 14 people, and now they see what we have today. The value there is we want to make the religion cleared to people. And that's why over time we've been having a lot of interfaith, interfaith discourse, interfaith seminar, interfaith uh, programs with the older faith. Our, Islam, our religion leaders should be the one to be blamed for the non-cohesiveness of the, the two religions especially. Because it's, it's the same thing is us in different path. Because check, from the time of Abraham, it's just like somebody has two, uh, two lineage. Two, you know, the other one was born by what he regarded as slave, and nobody wanted to, which happened naturally with we women being too, that no, he's a bastard. And that's why what is causing this vision. But what matters most is the content, the content of both. Look at this year now. We have Easter holiday, we have Good Friday, or falling within the Ramadan. And some uh, Catholic are also fasting during this period, while some Pentecostals have started their own at the beginning of the year, do their own fasting. It just tells us that these things are common, it's just that we are using different pathways. Mm. So in Asphalt, that integration is our concerns. And that's why for Muslims that are probably being mis mis uh, uh, misconstrued or certain things about Christianity, because we accept the values of Christianity, in the sense that we, we believe in the prophet, Isa, which is Jesus. You know, we call it Isa, they call it Jesus. We believe so much in it. There's nothing that prophet Isa has come to do. Is they not listen to the message, the adulterations of messages that led to all this thing, and all boiled down on religion leaders. Mm. If religion leaders get things right, pick the right book and try to explain to people, I think, like when we were growing up, we, I wasn't trained in an Islamic school. I was trained in a Catholic school. And I'm always the top in my Bible studies throughout my five years of secondary schools. And that imbibed that culture in me. And you know, in this part of Nigeria, the Southwest, even now in the recent times, we are always uh, co, co living as Christians and Muslims. And we all celebrate the same festivity at the same time. As we're having Ramadan, especially the one when we kill Ram, the next one. A lot of Christians will come and hit Ram. So, and, and I'm sure they have booking well, space well, already. Yes. <laughs> booked, booked space and so I, I think it's really your leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting conversation. Yeah. And I imagine some of them are listening and thinking, uh, well, is it us? They will say, well, it's maybe politicians or people who are trying to and use this using for them. their means. And that's why in that fact, over 29 years of our system, we remain a political. We remain a political and we tell people clearly, right. when you want to donate to us, we don't, we don't press. You see what we have done. How you join us? Uh, and, and I think look at look at Lagos. Sorry, Lagos right. is about the expressway. We are building a mosque there that was about 2.5 billion. Internally, we have spent one billion on our own. It, we call that one a small society. And the way we are running as fat, you want government to see how to run governance, how to how to give good governance. That's the way NASFA has been run. Because we have ten agencies now. You know, I mentioned one the other time. We have we have a university called Fantin University. That one is in Oshobo. That has been there for over over ten years. We, we, we produce a lot of graduates, both Christians and Muslims. We're not being because we are the cheapest uh, private school uh, that have the lowest school fees in Nigeria today. 
and because of our of our policy that we know is the education that we can use to push this thing better we have thousand travels and tours yet yeah, federal government do hajj and all sort but our own private arrangement has even led the south, south mm -hmm. um, in saudi arabia to understand who we are and, and all other agencies and, that and, we and the reason i i made that point of oh sometimes they say it's the politicians politicians know it's the leaders community leaders <laughs> it's like there's always a blame game going oh, yes, around, around. Yes, and around at the end yeah. of the day we never really get to address we, 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 the, we, we, the we, issues i know that nasfat for those who are wondering what does nasfat mean it means national Nasr life Lala 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 society yes. of nigeria and your mission is to develop an enlightened muslim society nurtured by a true understanding of islam, of islam. Now, and there's and always welfare, been and welfare of mankind. and welfare, right? So there's always been that bone of contention for religions. There's the touchy areas. Don't come, don't talk, talk about this. The prophet, uh, for example, some Christians say, and don't call Jesus a prophet. Jesus is not a prophet. Uh, some Muslims oh, say, well, some Muslims we, say that. No, some Christians. Okay, Christians okay. say, don't call Jesus a prophet. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's not a prophet. So that's a touchy area for yeah, them. Yeah. And Muslims say, well, we see him as a prophet. And then there's the debate exactly. back and forth. It's almost for as long as age uh, itself, have it. that particular debate. And for the Muslims to say, well, uh, these are prophets. Don't speak about a prophet. And then some will say, well, why don't you let God fight for himself? And that debate keeps going on and on. At that point, we don't focus on ourselves now as human beings. We begin to focus on the differences. If we begin to change this narrative, because we've seen this degenerate into different things in our society. Some will say, that's one of the shackles holding us down as, yes, a country, as a country, we are bigger than. If we begin to change that mentality, change the narrative, what must we do? See, uh, like I, I like that uh, question and your comment on this. We we have online dawah series. You know, we're not just physically doing physical prayer session. We have an online series that we've we'll, we'll been running for over four years now. And yesterday we held one. It's across the globe. Mostly we targeted youth for them to understand Islam more. And it's about Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Islamophobia. Why did we generate that word Islamophobia? Uh, the reason is the perspective and then the wrong perception of what Islam is. Our attitude of people to Islam, to Muslims. Uh, this is one of the things you've raised now. And for us to have that done properly, we believe it's education. And that's why over, over two years now, Three years, we've been able to train over 2,000 young and adult Muslims on the knowledge of Islam. Because the problem is that some people are Christian, they don't even know the Bible. Some people are Muslim, they don't understand the Quran. The only thing from the beginning, from their date of birth, because their parents are Christians or Muslim, they just believe they are Christian and Muslim. But they don't take time and devote time to study that book. Like I said, I've, I've looked through the Bible. And I've looked through the Quran. I just continued pondering why it is discrepancies. Because if you're taking your time to go through that, so solution to what you are raising is education. Mm. And we have decided, even after this Ramadan, that the online Dawah series, we will upgrade it more. Because we always invite international scholars that people want to hear from. You know. And sometimes we invite the pastors. Interesting. Yes, yes, to come and to come and say what he wants to say about Isa. You know, based on your book, so that everybody could learn from it and now be able to compare. So education is it. Education okay. is it. What, what, a lot of us are Christians, a lot of us are Muslim, but are we really, do we really understand the religion? Or we are basing it on our parents and what they tell us. What our parents sometimes tell us are not true. Which brings us to my next question. You talked about education. When you travel out of this country to places where um, religion is not an issue at all. Yeah. People live like they're all one. Do you understand? Oh, sure. What is Nasfa doing? I know you have said that you want to um, educate some people about knowing Islam. Maybe that will help them to know we're all one. But what are the other measures Navdak is taking, like sensitizing people to know that we are one? When you go outside the country and you see places where these things happen, do you teach, do you have examples that you give them to know? For example, I mean, maybe I should take Dubai, for example. I mean, everyone is welcoming. Yeah. There are churches everywhere. Yeah. We accept, they, are, yeah. They, are, yeah. they accept everyone. Every fit. So what is NASVA, NASVA doing in that regard to ensure that uh, like we I've can said, practice this Like I said country? earlier, you know, I said we have some agencies. We are, our funding universities, if you are, is optional. 
if you are one of our students, you, it's mandatory for you to learn about the religion. But we'll make it optional for some Christians if they don't want to. Just for you to understand. That is another it. religion different from yes. Islam. Okay. Yes, we, it's mandatory. Then, two, we have uh, Nasfat Missionary Institute. You know, sometimes, like I said, the religion leaders are the cause of the issue. We are trying to put our imams, our fast, in the right contents. That when you are standing for Nasfat, this is our rules. Don't say what is not in the Quran. Don't say what is not in the Hadith. Don't put your own personal thinking or um, perception about idea and throw it to people. So every Nasfat member, we challenge even imams, we challenge our fast because our aim is to pro produce scholarly Muslims, mm -hmm. not just Muslim by name. Muslim that will be able to tell our father this is it. And like you said, our location, like I said, we have about eight locations in the United Kingdom alone. If we are not doing it right, we will not be receptive there. In the United States, we have close to about 10 locations. If we are not doing it right, we will not be. I've, I've, I've come across, there was a time I was traveling to one of our branch in Texas, and I passed through JFK, and the immigration helped me on. And I thought, I mean, because I've never experienced that kind of thing. But they said they deliberately held me on because they want to find out how we are doing our Islam that is quite different from others. Right. So, so the, that doesn't that get to do investigation yes. and check where we are located and so, the way we are doing it. So doesn't that get you some, we're, we're, we're totally out of time, maybe 30 seconds. Doesn't that get you flax amongst yourselves in the face? Because where we have this conversation is because when it comes to electoral cycle, our fault lines just jump out of the way. Uh, literally jumped in our faces and we find it very challenging. So when you confront your fellow Muslims, who you feel are not doing the right thing, how much flax do you get and how you do say, you address it? You say in Nasfat, uh, people come in that don't even have any ideas, whatever be their own conception of Islam, we allow them to true. But over time, by the time we're doing the education and the learning, on their own, they change. We don't force people. When a sister comes to her, our asalatu, and he's not using a jab. You know, some people will compel you must use yeah. it. If, you don't, if she doesn't understand the reason why she must use it, why must you compel it? Uh, that's why I said, understand the religion first before you can imbibe the values. Mm -hmm. So, in handling most of other faith, or, or, I mean, the people that are on the extremes, because Nasfat is scared of being an extreme person. You want to take it as it is in the Quran, as in the Hadith, and that's what follow. But there's no way you won't confront people that will tell you uh, this is innovation, you are doing something quite different, somebody doesn't do it, just like the issue of Hajj. Mm. So if, if, if Prophet Muhammad Salawa has been going to Hajj to using his horse and jump on it to Mecca for so many days, now that we have the plane, you tell me I shouldn't use the plane to go to Mecca when the life is so easy for me? There's a valid point right there, and that, and that speaks to education, understanding the times. And we wish we could go on and on with this conversation, but it's been very enlightening, particularly when you talk about education. It's one of the keys to unlocking our potentials as a people. We've been speaking with Alhaji Ayodeji Abdurruf, who's NASFAT president worldwide. By the way, NASFAT is uh, Nasrullah of Fati Society of Nigeria. Thank you so much for your yeah, time. You're Once again, Eid Mubarak. Same I know me. people are booking spots, so maybe we'll book our spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so well. just book your spots. <laughs> because that's why what we are, we are one. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so time. much. Sir. Thank you. We'll take a moment now on the show, and when we return, we have more for you. Yes, it's Eid al Fitri, so it's a special package. Don't go out anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome back, but we're still here. It's still the morning brief, and this segment is something to make you laugh. I mean, you're at home chilling, and we just want to make sure you put a smile on your face amidst all the challenges at the moment. So they say comedy, it just has a way of lightening up your mood, and that's all we're about to do right now. And to take us through that, we have Kofi. He'll say he's not D-A, the guru. He'll say he is Kofi, T-H-A. That's that guru. Well, Kofi, he's a comedian, actor, singer. Welcome. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> triple threat. Triple threat. What's that? <laughs> and that's what that's what my question is. Singer, What's the comedian, uh, actor. actor? It's even more than three. Producer. <laughs> I decided to just leave it at three. Three. He for just now. like the three. Because it's supposed to be a brief morning brief. Yeah. Yeah. Morning yeah. brief. Keep How is that connected keep to keep you? Brief. <laughs> keep it brief. <laughs> okay, keep it brief. <laughs> Talking about keeping it brief, just quickly you know tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't <laughs> laugh. That's <laughs> so I don't. Right, so out already. Like, yeah. there's nothing to say here. Yeah. Uh, Kofi, you're born to a Congolese, uh, Togolese mother. Yeah. I'd like to know what the background, your background was like. Was okay. Not, not no. your background no, no, behind no. you, okay. Kofi. This is going to be a long your, interview. Oh, Let me just brace up. <laughs> okay. I, I presently live in Oniru, Victoria okay. Island, but exactly where I was born, it used to be a slum called Maroko. Way back, mm. so twist of fate. Right. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when I move around the neighborhood, I try to picture what used to be here, what used to be here, and I laugh. Anybody with me would not know why I was laughing. So I grew up in Morocco, then Bariga. So I'm a Bariga breed. Mm. I'm a Morocco boy. I I grew up in Ijebuibu, Ibadan, served in Jaws, and uh, so quite a humble beginning. Um, I didn't know we were poor, though, because my parents made the sacrifices. Yeah. Um, you know, I attended Kuramo Primary School, which is opposite a hotel, so I, I used to think we were uppity and all that. But it was when <coughs> reality <laughs> set in later that I knew that, okay, we didn't have a fridge. And I didn't see Nepal light until 1988. During Banzi. You were, no, band, band minus. non-existent. There you go. Because mm, where we were in Morocco, there was no Nepal. Oh. So I, I didn't watch the same cartoons you watched. Uh, okay, you, you are younger than he. I didn't watch the same <laughs> cartoons you watched uh, as a kid. Are you being ageist, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's just There's trying to tell us. Because he's 47, would you even believe he is? <laughs> okay. Uh, so growing up was quite good. Uh, I was disciplined a lot and... Um, I, I grew up, um, I was allowed to play and stray, but not go astray. Mm. Um, I went crab hunting, I went uh, fruit plucking. We didn't know it was almond until later. <laughs> it's probably fruit. <laughs> fruit. <laughs> fruit. <laughs> uh, I, yes, and I went a la bonbon catching. I don't know if What's you know that? Some of them will know that? that. So it's a beetle <laughs> that flies. You just get a little string tied around and the and neck. And that was my and toy. So and, are body an animal kids. is they don't, okay. they don't know these things. When you had toys, Ala Bonbon was my toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to house it in a matchbox. You know, you, you, know, you punch holes in it and you feed it with leaves uh, and stuff. The games you played, for me, it was a playing station. Uh, Agbaluma seeds. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for my background. Yeah, I'll reveal you. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, I did tenter with the girls. And some of the girls played football with us, but I wasn't good with football, so I had too many injuries. And my mom used hot water on me a lot. Oh, yes, I had lice in my hair, in my hair, and my mom had to scrape my hair at some point. So it was pretty much um, a noble, regular background. You know, I, I grew up in a place where there was so much diversity. I, I didn't know religion or ethnicity, actually. Morocco had everybody. I could speak Ijo at one time, because my neighbors were Ijo. I could pick Calabar, Efik at some point because we had everybody around us and sometimes uh, spent quite some time at Onimalu with the Hausa guys. It's now that I know that Nigeria has different, but back then as a kid I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So it was quite good. I, I grew up well, yeah. Mm, that's good. So. I could actually just listen to you all day. There's <laughs> a way you, you also speak, uh, and I think it comes from experience, comes from wisdom, uh, the way you string together your words. I'm not analyzing your speech, <laughs> but I could listen to you all day, and it just speaks to the quality that you have in you, the creativity. Nice. So it's a no-brainer that you are who you are today. But tell us, where have you been? Because there are people asking, oh, what? I mean, we used to see Kofi. Kofi used to do music, do comedy, do shows. Uh, you almost could not avoid him. You turn on your TV, you see Kofi. You turn it off, <laughs> go to a show, you see Kofi. Ah, you watch movies, movie, there's, there's Kofi, but right now, they don't see you as much. So what, what's going on? Uh, I, I think you need to understand growth for every person. 
there's a point you get to you need to know that you've achieved certain things and you shouldn't run the race like uh, you know we're talking i'm 47 so if i'm still doing what i was doing 20 years ago then it means i'm not growing mm. so i'm caught up in my blessings and doing it the way i should do it at this stage Just say that again You're caught i'm up? caught up in my blessings you know yeah. when somebody looks up to you and they are chasing what you were chasing and you're still chasing those same things they will surpass you so recognize your blessings and be in it so as we speak if you're following me you see everything i'm doing but if you're not following me you will not see it that means you are not totally into me the people who give me business don't need my social media handle to give me business but we're in an age where people need validation from thought factors that do not even add value you know most of the followers we have online are actually looking for what they can get from us they do not actually add to us so i don't need to validate constantly for those people and then when we're coming up the platforms we had were quite a few now it's so vast and tuned to a more younger generation as we speak i just released a new music video for flex one of my songs it will play on certain platforms certain platforms that cater to a certain demographic will not play that video because what they want to showcase is not what i am portraying i am a family brand so sometimes when we send out our music videos they'll say it doesn't have you can't find me at this age smoking in videos showing off body parts and all that i'm too old for that you're caught up in your blessing yes because i have a family and an image to project to my kids my daughter is in SS2, going to SS3. My son is his uh, class captain. You know, <laughs> my, so they are exemplary figures in their own space. So if peradventure I mess up on my own grind, it will backtrack to them. Yeah. They will be the laughing stock in their school environment. So at this point in my career, I have to protect them first above my own needs they are my focus now so whatever i do so i will not want to propagate my brand through scandals or all those things that is now the new norm constantly in people's faces with anything that is ridiculous and not necessary that is the new drive and the new vibe i am not that person so i still do the job i do the work if you need it you see it mm. till date between 2018 and as we speak, I've done 25 movies without a loan from anybody. 25? Wow. Yes, I have 34 music albums and I'm releasing another one soon for Ashney. So I constantly do the work. I have done two books. I'm the only entertainer who has quite um, a repertoire that nobody has. I have the highest albums. number of music videos, highest movies done by any stand-up comedian in Nigeria. Uh, all these things are there. If you check, you'll find oh, it. Oh, absolutely. But people like noise, and I'm not the noise. You see, I'm still my mother's son. So I must maintain that discipline and principle because it would... How am I going to sit in front of the family and try and defend any errors I make? Because mm. I am the yardstick for the next ones coming that they will say, okay, Uncle Kofi did it well, so you have permission to go and do it. If I don't do it right, no one else in my family in the coming generations will be permitted to do it. Kunle Afalanya is doing what he's doing because somebody set the stage for him. So that, I'm the first of everything in my family. The okay. first of your name? First of everything. I'm the first born. I'm the head of the family. I'm the Lori B. I am, you know, so I am an antecedent to a lot. I'm a forerunner. So I have to be careful what I put on ground. So if you see some of my colleagues still jumping up and down trying to impress people, ah, nah, 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 ah. See, I don't, if there's any new thing anybody is doing right now, go check my pedigree. I have done, done it. it. I have done it. Been a, lot there, of done the, that. a lot of the things. So, that so, <laughs> so some people may be, ah, guys, okay, if you choose to follow this part, are you yeah. making as, as much money as you should be able to make to fund the things you're funding? Oh, okay, guy, I said between 2018 and now, I've shot 25 movies without taking a loan. If I'm not making money, <laughs> I wouldn't make it. Well. Okay, Kofi, but let's... So I, you see, the thing is, people believe that it is when you, when you see someone all over the place that they are making money. I'm actually making more money than when I was all over the place trying to create an image. 
So once you create the image, you create the brand. Gary doesn't advertise itself. Mm. It sells. We don't come up no. from noodle stage. We don't do Gary stage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk so, about your own. You uh, no, go ahead. Um, the song, the music aspects or the music yeah. side of you. I recall last year you said techno created Afrobeats. No, 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 no. Which means, no. okay, do you want to you clear see, that? There's, there's always a misquote to a narrative. Mm. Techno is the one that created the new bounce in the Afro Afro. Beats okay. that you I just know. wanted you to clear that. Prior to that, rap music used to be the only source of music that sampled other sounds into it. Our songs from way back wasn't doing that. It was techno that started infusing all those elements of okay. sampling, uh, crash, or it, it, some sort of infusion that used to be in hip hop, not in Afro beats. Mm. So he was the one that gave, if you listen to Pana, there were certain elements that he put into it and the bounces and then everybody heard that and started doing the same things in different ways. So he was the one that brought that new groove. What he did with Pana and some other songs he did at the time, Jay Martins was doing it the high life way mm. prior, but Techno took it a step further and then every young person followed. Mind you, it was the same techno that now wrote some of the new songs that Davido used to blow up at the time. Mm. So yeah. it was the one constantly giving every other person ideas on how to go with it. Okay. So that was what I said. And but trust, they took it out of context. Ah, yeah. they would always. <laughs> that's why. That's one other reason why you don't see me all over the place anymore. I don't. I. I can't withstand the toxicity. It. It. it I cringe at it. So like how, a lot of toxicity. Yeah. How did we get here? How do we? have too many ignorant people being the ones at the fore. And you know, in that space of social media where a few enlightened people are supposed to rub off on you, the ignorant ones drown and discourage us from interacting constantly. That, so that, we pull that, back. Kofi, that is the argument now. People like you hold certain values and very yeah. strong values. People are saying, you should actually show up as much as possible because the man who shows up that is counted most of the time. Mm. So there's a proliferation of quote unquote these characters that we are concerned about. Let me use a civil language. I'll tell you mm. why people like myself keep pulling back. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to say this. In a society, in a system that has no structure to celebrate value, you are always going to be swimming against the tides. Here I am, I have to struggle for sponsorship every time. Corporate Nigeria does not exactly want valuable brands. They just want people who will bring numbers, no matter how junky it is. So if we have a system where people like myself are constantly at the pedestal, at the ones that, take for instance, you go, you drive around town and you see billboards of Joker Silva, Alibaba, all the veterans constantly. Do you know that young people will pick up on that? I'm like, it means I should keep working to the point where as I get older, I get more appreciated. But Nigeria is a system where the older you get, the more experience you have, the more they throw you out of the system. So young people feel it is now. So there's no way my values can rub off on young people if I'm not constantly being pushed in their presence. Like I just said, I will send out a new video and you tell me that my video does not hold what you want to sell to young people. So why do I need to go into that space and try to correct young people who have a different mindset and then they constantly insult me? Why do I want to interact in that space? When for every time I say something, it is taken out of context. You know, I have a family that mental health is no longer a joke. For every time they get to see negative energy. There's a way they will feel, you know, there's the respect they give you at home. Mm -hmm. But if they see that outsiders are disrespecting you, they'll feel somehow withdrawn as well. So before it gets to that point, I have to kaku, say, ah, come. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, there's, there's this debate then that comes in, pardon me. So obviously there's a market for those uh, people or the products that is sell. Exactly. There's a big market for it. Funny, it, funny thing is, half the time, the numbers they chase does not ever translate. To money? Ah, trust me, half the time. That's why you see that almost every time they make ambassadors, they always fall short and something goes wrong and they drop the ambassador. But the challenge then is, and this is a debate, I'm glad we're talking about this. So there's, there's some who believe, are you guys who are some sort of oligopoly? 
So there are few people controlling the market at that time. We didn't have social media, it was just television. And I imagine TV stations would want to play your music. Ah, Kofi's music is out yeah. with Sound Sultan or this person. Put it there on rotation and the rest. And these younger ones didn't have that opportunity. No, then no, social no, no. media no, came. No, 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 pardon me, let me just land. Okay, fine. Because as a thinking, then okay. social media came and it just democratized things. So they didn't have to know anybody in a TV station or a radio station. They could put their material on social media and it would go viral. So attention sort of shifted, or at least they were able to enter the market that they thought was being gate kept. <laughs> you are the gatekeepers. Keepers. No, no. So to some, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. So to some extent, that democratizes. So they always feel that, aren't you feeling like the smartest person in the room? We like Pangolo music. We like Louis content. Let us enjoy our Louis content and stuff. So what do you say to that? I like your landing. Do you think there's value in a lot of the things that they enjoy now as against when we were young people? Mm. Do you think there's value in some of the things? Because half the time, I see people approach and be like, ah, nah, the way we want to do comedy that time, now, all this one that they are talking about, their skits are all just showing soft porn and all that. We weren't great creepers per se. We were also in a democracy. We, we started blooming from after 99. And everybody was given same access. If you had content that people liked, they would play you. If you check at that time, the same way they were playing Aroma, they were playing Oya O, Jukpa, Jukpa. They were playing some sort of, you know, but it appealed to a certain demographic, you know. <laughs> it was in this same country that some people say, I wait until Reggie, they sing safe at the time. Right. And we, we have a portable in this day and time. So it wasn't like there was a screening off of certain people. It was just that there was limited avenue to express. Social media just made it more open. Mm -hmm. The fans now decide. It gave power to the fans, not the entertainers. At the time, it was the entertainers and the platforms, limited platforms that de decided Mm. What, but now the fans decide what they and I like that part of it that it is the fans mm. yeah, that right. decide what they want. If okay. they like what you are doing, they will come. If they don't like your own, it's not that there is a system oh, yeah. pushing out. You know. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I wish we had. I wish we had a lot of time because we're Coffee planning you yeah, give yeah, us yeah. some comedy skits no, you know, and you know, songs really and I all believe, that. I personally so. believe that <laughs> to you, for you to be a comedian. You must be an intelligentsia. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 I totally believe it. I've seen, well, it's And for, it's, and for it's, Kofi, it's who is difficult. a comedian, actor, <laughs> and a singer, I mean, that's, that's double, I mean, triple threat. Like that is something I'll But thank you. <laughs> Uh, More than uh, what's going on. I, <laughs> don't worry, you come back. You come back on the show, and you have to sing for us. You maybe give us some new cast. No, I have all, all the old cast and new cast. I, 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 I have the biggest about this report fashion too. brand, though. Oh, that, that's my merchandise uh, as well. Oh, so, okay, Guru. Anyway, thank you very much, oh, Kofi, the Guru. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming on the morning brief. It's been very it, exciting. It was, it was very brief. I'd like to have you again. <laughs> that's what it was I'm really brief. You. No, you started by saying it should be brief, so yeah. we make it brief for you. Nice. Anyway, thanks for thank you. Me. Thanks thank so you. much. Thanks. So. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to Paris 2024 Olympics, but not now. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a moment when we come back. So don't go anywhere. Stay with this. Welcome back. It's now time to talk sports. And of course, the exciting news is that our girls, the Super Falcons, They've broken that jinx. 16 years, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, well, we had to do it. We're heading to Paris in France for the Olympics sometime, I think, in July. And that's why we have uh, sports anchor and correspondent Austin Okonakban, who is in London. Austin, we're coming to your neighborhood uh, pretty soon. Tell me how you feel. <laughs> What a great things to you, that Jeffrey, and, and, and good to be on the show. You know, the last time I was on the show, I was talking about the Super Eagles' failure to win the Afghan in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, today, I'm on the show to celebrate the Super Falcons for breaking that disgraceful jinx of not qualifying for the Olympics since Beijing 2008. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm very 
happy because Cecilia is in the show. She would have, <laughs> she would have been wasking lyrical and telling me all the time that it's just the woman who makes us happy. But we love this win. We love the fact that the girls are going to Paris and I cannot wait to see them when uh, we kick off the Olympics July the 26th. So let's, let's walk through some of the things we have to do. Now that we have uh, the jinx broken, that's, we've ticked that box. And everyone will be looking at these nine-time champions of Africa to properly represent us. What has to be done now so that um, we do better than what we did in Cote d'Ivoire? I think what we really need to do is pump up the mentality uh, because these girls, right from... Uh, the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, they got the world talking. They were this close to beating the impressive England team. They only lost, I think, their penalties and were ranked the best team in Africa. You see, our problem is continuation. We don't know how to do long-term planning. And that's why I struggle to understand what we can do now because the, the Olympics is here already. This is April. The Olympics is in July. Most of the girls will go back to their clubs now and then they'll come back to play the Olympics. So what we need to do now is get the Nigerian Football Federation to ensure that they're in, in a fine state, to ensure that they have the right mentality to go out there and execute this competition properly. The last time we, we featured at the Olympics was in Beijing 2008. Let me tell you an, an interesting fact. The only surviving member from that team in 2008 at the Olympics is Tochuku Oluei. She is the, and, um, she's the reserved goalkeeper for this team. So it tells you with everything we've been achieving women's football, none of these girls have been to the Olympics. So this is an opportunity for them to go there, give Nigeria, Africa a good representation. About Austin, you said, um, I like the part where you said uh, Cecilia is not here, so she won't <laughs> stress about how women, but I'm here, Austin. So you have to agree <laughs> that we always make you guys happy. I mean, we don't fall your hands when it comes to the female athletes or female sports in Nigeria. So well done again to the Super Falcons. But let's talk about yeah. their welfare and the preparation, as you said, going forward, going to Paris 2024. How hopeful are you that they're going to make a difference? And what is welfare looking like? What do you think should be done, should be put together so that, I mean, we've had a history. We know what happens sometimes with athletes who leave Nigeria to other countries. We know the challenges they face. Do you think that it can be done better this time? I don't think so. And unfortunately, we have a very... Um, frustrating and, should I say, incompetent Nigeria Olympic Committee that will, all, that will always wait till the last minute to get things done because this is um, an organization for the Nigeria Olympic Committee. They can work with the Ministry of Sports Development and the NFF, but this is their show. And with what we've seen with previous Olympics, I don't think they will do anything different. I am waiting for them to prove me wrong because sometimes we don't even know the kits that athletes will wear till about one week to the Olympics. I hear a lot of athletes complain about welfare. Sometimes they don't even get the grants that they get from international bodies that is given to them to even prepare for the Olympics. So it's, it's a problem of, uh, of putting people that are not competent and people who are not professional enough in sports, I keep saying it, until we get the right people to be involved with sports development in Nigeria, we'll keep going around circles. Don't use sports to play politics. Don't give sports to that man because he played good party politics. No, you need to give it to experts. It's a technical field. Give it to people who understand the language that these sports persons speak, particularly when you're dealing with women. If you give men 10% attention, you must give women 1,000. You know, so it's good that the Super Falcons, they're doing their beats. They always turn up. Not just the Super Falcons, and you're very correct. And today, I want to give uh, every woman that is contributing to sports development in Nigeria their flowers. Each time they have an opportunity to show up, they show up big time. Look at the last Commonwealth Games. All the gold medals we won, women. Each time our women step out, they make us proud. Look at the African Games in Ghana, the women showed up big time. So we expect that the least the, sports, the Ministry of Sports Development, the Nigeria Olympic Committee, and the different federations 
that will have athletes going to Paris for the Olympics can do is ensure that these ladies are well taken care of. I'm not saying ignore the men before my male athletes that are my friends will come for me. But give women the attention they deserve. And everything they've done for the country has been nothing but admirable and impressive. So I'm, I totally agree with you that they need to step up the game. But I doubt it because it's the same old, same Nigeria Olympic Committee. Mm. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why beating, I'm sure some people will be weeping already, but sometimes we need to get the whips out and uh, do the needful. But speak to us about that group we'll be in. So two African countries qualified, Zambia and the Super Falcons of Nigeria, but this is where it gets interesting. We're in the same group as Spain, Japan, Brazil. We did great during the Women's uh, World Cup. We defeated, uh, was it Australia now? Right, we defeat Australia. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. couldn't win in Canada. Front of the, in front of their big fans. Exactly right. But this one is very tricky because these names I'm seeing on the on the group is a very tricky one. So what do you predict? Time out. Last time out, we had one win, and I think uh, we couldn't win the others. This one, do you see us maybe winning one, drawing another, maybe not losing? Because we've said a lot about the women. Anna has been hyping them, so we have to win at least one match, Austin. Which will it be? But please, no pressure, Kayode. You know, let's just ensure that, that's what I'm saying, the mentality, the mentality needs to be right. We need to prepare these ladies properly. And you see, I keep telling people, every tournament in our world of sports operates with a different spirit. What you have at the World Cup, it's not what you get at the Olympics. It's not what you get at the Women's Africa Cup of Nations. You see, so with this World Cup, I'm telling everyone to calm down. It will not be Spain that you saw at the World Cup that will be at the Olympics because there's just something different about tournaments and the way, you know, they operate. Yes, I know if you call Brazil, everyone wants to jump up and, you know, start shivering. But what did Brazil do at the Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand? They just came there, added to the color, got us talking about them, and that's it. So we, we, we played an impressive draw with Canada, Canada are defending Olympic champions. Sure. They couldn't beat the Super Falcons at the World Cup. At the time of that World Cup, the Super Falcons were the lowest ranked team and they survived and came out of that group that had impressive Canada, Australia, and the Republic of Ireland. Nobody, I said nobody gave them a chance, yeah. but they came out of that group and were so close. This close, Kyle to beating England. So I'm saying they should take that mentality also. The team that I really respect at the Olympics is Japan. Uh, because whenever the Japanese women come out, they're always results-oriented. Mm, but I look, Sata Shola and most of the girls in this team haven't been to the Olympics before. This is the time for them to, you know... All Give right. us something memorable to remember. All right, Austin, we're totally out of time. We know you have a lot to tell us when it comes to these things. And we hope that... Uh, the metrics will change in terms of traction so that the women will get the right kind of compensation. When they go out and do well, let them also give them plots of land <laughs> and national awards so that they can be encouraged. Thank you so much, Austin Okonakwa, our sports anchor all the way from London in England. We're coming to your neighborhood. I need to repeat that. Just, just keep a room around for us. We'll be, we'll be right there with you. Aria, thank you so much, Jeffrey. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, just before we wrap up the show, we uh, just a moment to show you some visuals coming from uh, Dodon Barracks where President Bola Tinubu uh, is uh, doing the prayers. So those are the visuals. Expect. It's expected, I should say, uh, to be at this venue any moment from now. This is where the prayers this morning will be taking place. Uh, President Tinubu, as well as other top government officials are expected here. And you, some have made an earlier entrances, so I'm, I guess everyone is waiting for the arrival of the president to get things started. Uh, it's the end of the Ramadan fast and uh, things after this, we feast yeah. and marry. So let's just take a feel of some of the pre-prayers. <laughs> وَنَصَرَ أَبْدَى وَعَزَ جُنْدَى وَزَمَنَ أَعْزَى فَوَادَى لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ
ولا نعبد الا اياه of this uh, in the course of our other program in sunrise daily is coming up pretty soon so i'm sure at some point uh, we'll get in there to find out how the prayer is going i want to thank you of course uh for your time and of course your usual company um jeffrey uzongo all right guys thank you so much for sticking with us staying with us all through two hours it's not easy <laughs> we're going into sunrise very soon as jeffrey said and happy holidays eid uh make sure you're celebrating in a good mood today thank you for watching i'm Anne wawadu so it's a full day of celebration it still is. with channels television guess what the celebration continues tomorrow i mean it doesn't get better than that i'm coyote hikuli goodbye as you said going forward going to Paris 2024 how hopeful are you that they're going to make a difference and what is welfare looking like what do you think should be done should be put together so that I mean we've had a history we know what happens sometimes with athletes who leave Nigeria to other countries we know the challenges they face do you think that it can be done better this time I don't think so and unfortunately we have a very um, frustrating and should I say incompetent Nigeria Olympic Committee that will all that will always wait till the last minute to get things done because this is um, an organization for the Nigeria Olympic Committee. They can work with the Ministry of Sports Development and the NFF, but this is their show. And with what we've seen with previous Olympics, I don't think they will do anything different. I am waiting for them to prove me wrong because sometimes we don't even know the kids that athletes will wear till about one week to the Olympics. I hear a lot of athletes complain about welfare. Sometimes they don't even get the grants that they get from international bodies that is given to them to even prepare for the Olympics. So it's, it's a problem of, uh, of putting people that are not competent and people who are not professional enough in sports, I keep saying it, until we get the right people to be involved with sports development in Nigeria, we'll keep going around circles. Don't use sports to play politics. Don't give sports to that man because he played good party politics. No, you need to give it to experts. It's a technical field. Give it to people who understand the language that these sports persons speak, particularly when you're dealing with women. If you give men 10% attention, you must give women 1,000. You know, so it's good that the Super Falcons, they're doing their beats. They always turn up. Not just the Super Falcons, and you're very correct. And today, I want to give uh, every woman that is contributing to sports development in Nigeria their flowers. Each time they have an opportunity to show up, they show up big time. Look at the last Commonwealth Games. All the gold medals we won, women. Each time our women step out, they make us proud. Look at the African Games in Ghana, the women showed up big time. So we expect that the least the sports, the Ministry of Sports Development, the Nigeria Olympic Committee, and the different federations that will have athletes going to Paris for the Olympics can do is ensure that these ladies are well taken care of. I'm not saying ignore the men before my male athletes that are my friends will come for me. But give women the attention they deserve. And everything they've done for the country has been nothing but admirable and impressive. So um, I totally agree with you that they need to step up the game, but I doubt it because it's the same old, same Nigeria Olympic Committee. Mm. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why beating. I'm sure some people will be weeping already, but sometimes <laughs> we need to get the whips out and uh, do the needful. But speak to us about that group we'll be in. So two African countries qualified Zambia and the Super Falcons of Nigeria, but this is where it gets interesting. We're in the same group as Spain, Japan, Brazil. We did great during the Women's uh, World Cup. We defeated, okay. uh, was it Australia now? Right, we defeated yeah. Australia. Uh, yeah. Couldn't win in Canada. Front of the, in and front of their big fans. Exactly, right. But this one is very tricky because these names I'm seeing on the on the group is a very tricky one so what do you predict time out last time out we had one win and i think uh we couldn't win the others this one do you see us maybe winning one 
drawing another, maybe not losing? Because we've said a lot about the women. Anne has been hyping them, so we have to win at least one match, Austin. Which will it be? Well, please, no pressure, Coyote. You know, let's just ensure that, that's what I'm saying, the mentality, the mentality needs to be right. We need to prepare these ladies properly. And you see, I keep telling people, every tournament in our world of sports operates with a different spirit. What you have at the World Cup, it's not what you get at the Olympics. It's not what you get at the Women's Africa Cup of Nations. You see, so with this World Cup, I'm telling everyone to calm down. It will not be Spain that you saw at the World Cup that will be at the Olympics because there's just something different about tournaments and the way, you know, they operate. Yes, I know if you call Brazil, everyone wants to jump up and, you know, start shivering. But what did Brazil do? at the Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. They just came there, added to the color, got us talking about them, and that's it. So we, we, we played an impressive draw with Canada. Canada are defending Olympic champions. Sure. They couldn't beat the Super Falcons at the World Cup. At the time of that World Cup, the Super Falcons were the lowest-ranked team, and they survived and came out of that group that had impressive Canada, Australia, and the Republic of Ireland, nobody, I said nobody gave them a chance, yeah. but they came out of that group and were so close, this close, Kyle to beating England. So I'm saying they should take that mentality also. The team that I really respect at the Olympics is Japan, yeah. because whenever the Japanese women come out, they're always results-oriented. Mm, but I look, Sata Shola and most of the girls in this team haven't been to the Olympics before. This is the time for them to, you know, all Give right. us something memorable to remember. All right. Austin, we're totally out of time. We know you have a lot to tell us when it comes to these things. And we hope that uh, the metrics will change in terms of attraction so that the women will get the right kind of compensation. When they go out and do well, let them also give them plots of land <laughs> and national awards so that they can be encouraged. Thank you so much, Austin Okonakwa, our sports anchor all the way from London in England. We're coming to your neighborhood. I need to repeat that. Just... Just keep a room around for us. We'll be, we'll be right there with you. Right, thank you so much, Jeffrey. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, just before we wrap up the show, we uh, just a moment to show you some visuals coming from uh, Dodon Barracks, where President Bola Tinubu uh, is uh, doing the prayers. So those are the visuals. Expected. It's expected, yeah. I should say, uh, to be at this venue any moment from now. This is where the prayers this morning will be taking place. Uh, President Tinubu, as well as other top government officials, are expected here. Any, some have made an earlier entrances, so I'm, I guess everyone is waiting for the arrival of the president to get things started. Uh, it's the end of the Ramadan fast, and uh, things after this, we feast yeah. and marry. So let's just take a feel of some of the pre prayers. <laughs> وسبحان الله بكرة وأسيلا لا إله إلا الله وحدا أجس وعدا ونصر أبدا وعز جندا وعز من أعزى فوعدا لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه of this uh, in the course of our other programming, Sunrise Daily is coming up pretty soon, so I'm sure at some point uh, we'll get in there to find out how the prayer is going. I want to thank you, of course, uh, for your time and, of course, your usual company, um, Jeffrey Uzonga. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking with us, staying with us all through two hours. It's not easy. <laughs> We're going into tomorrow's anniversary, as Jeffrey said. And happy holidays, Eid Fitri. Uh, Make sure you're celebrating in a good mood today. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. So it's a full day of celebration, it still is. with Channels Television. Guess what? The celebration continues tomorrow. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. I'm Kaido Hikili. Goodbye.